What's up guys and welcome back to Soft and Order Solutions and today we're talking about Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and the best settings you can use right now for the multiplayer version since it's out right now at this very moment. What a lot of people don't understand is that you can use different types of upscaling to achieve better FPS and smoother gameplay experience and also for your game to look really good. Now as you can see at this rain moment I'm using different types of upscalings and these are just previews to show you all right. These are examples. As you can see, we just jumped a massive amount of FPS and the game still looks perfectly fine. So it's going to depend on the upscaling you're using inside this game to make the game run perfectly fine, have good FPS and make the game look really good as well. Now, some upscalings will make the game look very, very sharp and some upscalings are for lower end machines. And I highly recommend that you go ahead and change these settings right now. Something I just want to point out is this. There's a lot of upscalings in this game that are meant for lower end machines. As you can see, that car looks very blurry at this very moment, but some people don't care about that. They care about achieving 180 to 190 to 200 FPS in this game. So it depends on the upscaling you use inside this game for your performance and how the game's going to look. These are different types of upscalings, and I can tell you right now, you will not guess which ones I'm, I'm busy using right now at this very moment. And I can tell you that. These are all different types of upscalings. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you the best things you can use right now at this very moment for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, I'm in the game right now and I'm achieving about 116 FPS as max FPS. Now, something that's very important that you need to know. If you're listening to my voice right now, you need to know this. If I go to the settings and show you the best settings you can use right now, I'm not going to do that right now. There's something you need to change, and it's in the config file for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 has its own config file right now, and what it did was, and I went to go check this out myself, the config file is still running the old driver that you had installed when the beta version came out. So if you played the beta version, it will still have the beta version graphics card driver on your config file now we're going to go ahead and fix that and then also change things in the config file and i highly recommend that you change your config file exactly like mine some of the things you aren't going to be changing obviously you don't have this exact same gpu as me or cpu as me or ram as me but the values of the stuff inside the config file you're going to need to change this plays a very very important role on this game for you to achieve higher fps inside this game please go ahead and follow my guidelines and i can promise you you'll be good to go if you watch this entire video ladies and gentlemen let's jump straight into this video all right ladies and gentlemen so this is the most important role that you're going to need to do right now at this very moment with call of duty being released and being played right now for you to achieve the best frames out of this game you're going to come to your file explorer like this and go to your documents folder go to call of duty go to players and then come to this one over here that says options 3.cod22 this is the latest Call of Duty config file for Modern Warfare 3. This is for Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2. Do not touch this. You're going to come to this one over here. And then please, ladies and gentlemen, this is what you're going to need to do. You're going to right click on your config file. You're going to say delete. And you're going to go ahead and delete it in your recycling bin as well. Please go ahead and do so. Now what you're going to need to do is pause my video. Because now you're going to go and relaunch the game on Steam or on Battle.net, wherever you're playing this game, and let it make a brand new config file for you and let's jump straight into the next step all right ladies and gentlemen once you launch your game you're going to get this error right here now don't worry about this error it's just because call of duty doesn't know what the fuck just happened okay you're just going to click on okay and then your shaders will start installing like this okay because call of duty literally just thought to itself um what's going on here i don't have a config file now what it will do is it will stay on zero for a little while don't worry about it it's because it's creating a new config file for you all right, then it's going to start installing the shaders and let the shaders finish, please. OK, to 100 percent. Then your game will look like this. Now, once your game is completely shader installed and everything is fine on your config file, you're going to need to quit out of your game again. Quit out of your game and then quit to your desktop. Let's jump straight into the next steps. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once you're back on your desktop, this is what you're going to need to do. You're going to go to your file explorer like this, go to documents, go to Call of Duty, Go to players now as you can see that file is now completely gone you do not need it the reason why i say you do not need it is because it is the old config file your old config file and your new config files can mess around with one another and fuck up your entire game for you you don't want it to do that 
Now, you're going to come to this one over here that says options 4.cod23, which is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3's config file. It's a new one. You're going to come inside here, and you're going to open this up. Now, as you can see over here, this is the latest graphics card driver. This is correct. This is what you need, okay? This is what you need. Now, number one, this is the most important option inside the config file to go ahead and change. It is the most important option to change. Now, as you can see, mine is five here, which is very incorrect because that defaults to five. Now, you do not want this to run at its defaults. You want to change it to your total cores of your machine. Now, I've got an i7-9700K. It's an eight-core, eight-thread CPU. You're going to put your total cores inside here, and I highly recommend you go ahead and do that. Mine is eight total cores. Now, for people out there that has way better Intel machines and way better Ryzen machines and stuff like that, make sure that you go ahead and put not your E cores, your performance cores, your actual total cores inside here. Okay, please go ahead and do that. Now, once that has been changed, you can increase your FPS by 30 to 35% just by changing this alone. Just by changing this little option inside the config file. And then also to have this running on the latest graphics card driver. For AMD users and NVIDIA users, make sure it's running the correct driver. Okay, once you're done with this, you're going to click on file, click on save, and then close out of this. All right, let's jump straight into the next step. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so let's jump over a couple of steps that you're going to need to take to make this game run perfectly fine on your machine. You need to do all of these things for your game to run perfectly fine. And this is for all users out there. It doesn't matter what machine you are running. You can run a low-end machine, medium-end machine, high-end machine, a NASA fucking launching nuclear missile machine. It doesn't matter, okay? You're going to come to the start button over here or go to the search button and type in settings or just come here and go to settings like this and then open this up. You're going to make sure you're going to come to gaming over here and then go inside here. Make sure that the game bar is turned completely off and you have all of these settings like this, like mine, exactly as is. You're going to come to game mode and make sure the game mode is turned on. You're going to come to graphic settings and come inside here. You're going to make sure that hardware accelerator GPU scheduling right now for Modern Warfare 3 is turned on. On. It actually improves latency and input lag. So I highly recommend you go ahead and turn it on. Now, something I just want to mention is this. If yours is turned off like this and you turn it on, it's going to say that over there. Restart your PC to apply these changes. Now, do not restart your PC just yet because you're going to need to restart your PC at the end of my video in any ways. So don't restart your PC just yet. Watch my video finish. Then you're going to restart your machine for everything to apply that I'm about to show you. So make sure you have this on. Please go ahead and have this option on. All right, you're going to come to the home button over here and you're going to come over here where it says privacy. You're going to scroll all the way down to where it says background apps and you're going to turn this from on to off if you're a Windows 10 user like me. So all of these things over here it's not going to run in the background of your machine and use CPU, VRAM, and RAM usage. You don't want it to do that. You want nothing to run in the background while you are playing your game. Now, for Windows 11 users, it's a little bit more slightly difficult and different. You have to individually disable these things, okay? You are the one that installed Windows 11, so just go ahead and Google how to disable these things, the background apps. I'm not going to do that right now because otherwise I'm going to make my video even longer than what it already is, okay? You're going to click on the home button over here, and then you're going to come to update and security. Please make sure that your Windows is up to date to the latest version of Windows. Does not matter if you're Windows 10 or 11. Make sure that your Windows is up to date as well. You need to do this on a regular basis, and I highly recommend you go ahead and do that. Once you're done with this, you can just close out of this. Let's jump straight into the next step. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the next step I highly recommend you go ahead and do is this over here. You're going to come to the search button over here and type in CMD, and then right-click on this, and then say run and as many administrator it will ask you a command prompt you're just going to say yes to it like this just say yes to it and then you'll have this on your screen like this you're going to type in sfc spacebar forward slash scan now one word and press enter now once you press enter it's going to scan through your entire machine your windows files your game files every single drive that you have and find out if you have any corrupt files on your machine and it will automatically fix it for you 
A lot of people don't know that this is even an option, that you can do this to fix your machine for you. So I highly recommend if you've never done this before, please go ahead and do it. If you have done this before, please go ahead and do it again. See if you have any corrupt files on your machine, it will automatically repair it for you. If you don't have any corrupt files inside here, it will just at the end of the search tell you that you have no corrupt files. If it tells you it had corrupt files, it will tell you that it automatically fixed it for you. All right, let's jump straight into the next step. All right, so the next step I highly recommend you also go ahead and do is this over here. Make sure that you have the latest graphics card drivers installed on your machine. It does not matter if you're an AMD user or an NVIDIA user, please go ahead and go to drivers and make sure that you have 546.01 installed on your machine right now at this very moment as an NVIDIA user. You can just go to check for updates and it will tell you that you have the latest graphics card drivers installed on your machine and it's already been installed. Make sure that you have 546.01 on your machine as an NVIDIA user. Please go ahead and do this. AMD users, you'll know what's the latest driver. Please go ahead and install it. All right, let's jump straight into the next step. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the next step I highly recommend you go ahead and do is this over here. If you are an NVIDIA user, you're going to need to watch this part of my video, okay? You're going to right-click on your desktop and open up a NVIDIA control panel. And once your NVIDIA control panel has opened up, it's going to look like this. You're going to come to Adjust Image Settings with Preview, and you're going to come inside here. You're going to select this one here that says Use the Advanced 3D Image Settings and click on Take Me There. It's basically just going to take you to the Manage 3D Settings, and it's going to take you to the Global Settings. Now, I highly recommend that you go ahead and copy everything I have inside you as is. Please go ahead and do this, okay? This is a brand new feature in the Manage 3D settings. Please go ahead and put it on Prefer System Fallback, okay? Please go ahead and do that. But everything inside you, you're going to copy as is. Number one, CUDA GPUs. Obviously, it says all. You need to select your graphics card like this. Scroll down. Go all the way down all the way down and you'll see it says auto off off and on low latency mode for some people there's only one option which is ultra if you only have one option that says ultra select the ultra option just never have this off okay if you have ultra and on just put it on on okay your screen might flash it might do a couple of weird things don't worry it's just applying the settings for you that is my graphics card i'm currently running make sure you select your dedicated graphics card you're going to go prefer maximum performance 100 gig on the shader cache still for modern warfare 3 on allow high performance on on with that and then off with triple buffering all right these are virtual reality things you do not need this so don't fuck around with this all right once you're done with this you're going to apply these settings don't worry your screen might flash a couple of times don't worry about it it's just applying the settings for you okay from here you're going to go to config surround and physics and this is your gpu your GPU handles the physics of your games and stuff like that. So here you're going to select your dedicated graphics card, not auto select, not CPU, your dedicated graphics card that's in your PCIe slot right now, your dedicated graphics card. Now, if you haven't done this already, please go ahead and do it and then say apply. Please go ahead and do that. Now, once this is applied, you're going to come to adjust desktop color settings and you're going to come inside here. Now, as you can see, I have multiple screens. This is the screen I play my game on. You might just have one screen or multiple screens, but just select the screen that you're playing your game on. OK, now I don't use the video filters. The reason why I don't use them is because it actually decreases FPS inside Modern Warfare 3 and it's been proven. So do not use NVIDIA filters, rather use this instead. OK, you're going to come over here. Brightness on its normal default, 50 percent contrast at 65 percent. It's a sweet spot for every Call of Duty gamma at 1.00 and then digital vibrance plays a very big role on how your game looks. In fact, how all your games look, not just Call of Duty, because this will apply for every single game that you're going to be playing. Now, if you pull this down, you'll see that your screen goes black and white. Now, if you put it all the way up to 50, which is this default settings, you'll see that your screen looks washed out. You don't want that, okay? Your screen looks now washed out. You'll see it if you do it yourself, okay? Do not have this at 50%. You're going to bump this up to either 65% or you're going to bump it up to 75%. And this is for people with bad eyesight, if you wear glasses and stuff like that. The highest I would recommend if you have bad eyesight is 80% over here. This is the highest I would recommend. So it does not strain your eyes and give you headaches. Okay? Now, if you've got the best of vision, you can go higher. 
I have mine at 95, and this has always been my sweet spot for all my games that I play, especially Call of Duty, and it makes the game pop and look amazing. Now, once these settings have been applied to your machine and everything, we're going to jump straight into the game now and show you the best settings you can use at this very moment for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we are in the game right now, and this is what you're going to need to do, and I highly recommend you go ahead and change the settings inside this game to have a competitive advantage. I'm going to give you competitive settings and the best settings for every single user out there. It doesn't matter what machine you are running. Use these settings to achieve the best FPS and overall graphics quality. All right, you're going to come to this little option over here, and let's jump straight into the settings. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the first thing I highly recommend you go ahead and do is come to the display tab and come inside here. Now, at this very moment, there is no physical difference between full screen borderless and full screen exclusive. One difference is that full screen exclusive actually gives you less latency problems and just issues in general, okay? This is why this is an option. I highly recommend if you're running one monitor, run this in full screen exclusive. So if you're running a display or a gaming monitor, just one, go with full screen exclusive. If you run multiple monitors like me, go with full screen borderless. You won't see input latency and stuff like that. Don't worry, you will be good to go. There's no FPS difference neither, okay? Between these two options. This gives you less input latency. If you have one screen, if you have multiple screens, it's not gonna help you, okay? So go with full screen borderless if you have multiple screens, full screen exclusive if you have one monitor and you'll benefit out of it, all right? Let me jump over something that's very, very important. Display gamma. This is something I just want to point out to a lot of people because a lot of people actually go ahead and select the 2.4 option. Now, I do not recommend that you put this at 2.4 if you have a display, a gaming monitor, or just a monitor in general. 2.4 is for TVs, not for monitors 2.2 is for monitors so 95 percent of the gaming community is going to be selecting 2.2 because you're running a monitor or a display unit okay i run a tv so this is why i use 2.4 this is my current rig and this is how it looks okay it's a 9700K, it's an RTX 2060 OC, and 16 gigs of RAM, and everything has been overclocked, my RAM timings has been shortened, everything is changed on my machine. Don't worry about it, that's my stuff, okay? Right, now, something I want to mention is this over here, brightness. Go to 60% over here, not 50. 60% is a sweet spot for this game. You're going to come over here where it says constant mouse to game window. Now, if you have multiple screens and you do not want to get off your screen like this, now I'm on my left side screen, and if I go like this, I go to my right side screen. Okay, now, if you put this on and you apply these settings, you can't get off of the screen at all, okay? If you want to do that, go ahead and do that. It's a cool feature in the game if you want to go ahead and do that, but I leave mine off because I actually monitor my YouTube on my left-hand side screen and my Discord on my right-hand side screen. Okay, so I highly recommend you choose your own personal preference inside here, depending on your type of rig that you're running. Okay, NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency Mode, I highly recommend that you put this on On Plus Boost. It does not matter what machine you are running. If your CPU is stronger than your GPU, or your GPU is stronger than your CPU, put it on On Plus Boost, okay? Do not put it on Off. That's one thing I would never recommend you do. If you put this on Off, you're going to get extremely bad FPS, and your game's going to like just overall run like dog shit so do not turn this off you can try on i'm not saying that you can't you can okay it does depend on your machine but right now this very moment on plus boost runs the best for modern warfare 3 in its state that it's in right now it's just been released on plus boost is the best option over here eco mode now a lot of people with laptops only has specific things inside here Okay, and then people with desktop machines have different things inside here as well. Right now, at this very moment, leave it at custom. Okay, this will cap your FPS to the refresh rate of your monitor, and this will cap your FPS even lower. You do not want it to do that. You don't need it to do that. In fact, your machine's not going to blow up. Your machine's not going to catch a light. It's not going to like just explode. Leave it at custom, and you should be good to go. VSync in gameplay. And then VSync menus. Turn this off if you don't get screen tearing in your game and you don't get screen tearing in your menus. Turn it off. If you turn it on, 
The only reason why you would turn it on is if you're getting screen tearing, like that picture over there. If your game does that, turn it on. That's why this option is here, okay? Custom frame rate limit, I currently have mine unlimited and I've always had mine unlimited. Now, this is your own personal preference, okay? Literally, a lot of people do complain about this when I say put this on unlimited because they're scared the machine's going to, I don't know, GPU's going to die or it's going to catch a light and, you know, burn out or some bullshit. If that's your type of mindset, I don't know, maybe you've heard this by someone and you cap your stuff like this. So you go here and you go custom and you run it like this. That's your own personal preference, okay? Literally, it's your own personal preference. I, I'm not going to tell you what to do here, okay? But for me, I have mine unlimited, and that's how I leave it. So I do unlimited FPS constantly in the menus, in the selection screen, in my game, everywhere. I leave this like this, okay? Focus mode is something to do with multiple screens. You can test it out yourself. I'm not going to go in depth with this. I really not going to go in depth with this. A lot of people only play with one screen in any ways. So just leave this option. You do not need to touch it at all. Okay. Leave it at 0% and then just apply these settings. Once you apply these settings, let's jump straight into the quality tab. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we are in the quality tab right now. Now, a lot of people in general will run something inside here. I highly recommend that you do not use any of these. Okay. You're going to go custom. You obviously can't select custom if you're not going to change anything inside here, but you're going to start changing things inside here, then that will go to custom by itself. Okay? Cool. Now, this is the Intel upscaling. I use this as my own personal preference in upscaling for my specific rig. In the beginning of my video, I was showing you different types of upscalings that I was using to test FPS, performance, and how the game looks. All of the above. Right? Cool. Now, I use Intel's upscaling at ultra quality at 90% and normal on the texture resolution. This is how I personally run my game. Okay? Me personally. Now, for people out there that's using the Video DLSS right now, I highly recommend if you are using the Video DLSS, go ahead and use it. It runs very, very well on Modern Warfare 3. Not so well on Modern Warfare 2, but right now, you're playing Modern Warfare 3. Go ahead and use it. I tested this out myself. NVIDIA DLSS gives you more FPS and makes the game look really well. So you go ahead. If you're a NVIDIA DLSS user and you have this option, go with this. Now you can go with balanced or quality. Please, for the love of fuck, do not put this on performance or ultra quality. You're going to tear out your own eyes of how bad the game looks. So balanced or quality. That is what you're going to choose. The sharpness is your own personal preference, okay? 90% here and then normal over here. Now, for people out there, this I have always skipped. I even skipped this option when I was showing the beginning of my video with different types of upscalings. I don't use this. The reason why I don't use this, it is a dog shit option. I kind of want to puke every time that I see this. This option shouldn't even be here, all right? NVIDIA image scaling. I highly recommend if you've got a good enough machine, run this. It runs very, very well. It makes the game look like a AAA title game. And then this makes the game look like a AAA title game. This makes the game look like a AAA title game. This makes the game look like dog shit. This makes the game look like a AAA title game. Go with this. Ultra quality, five of year, but yet again, it's your own personal preference. 90% off normal. All right. Now we're going to get to this people with lower end machines or budget gaming machines, right? And you're not achieving the FPS. You should be achieving go with AMD FSR, go to quality or ultra quality. Do not select balance. Do not select performance. The game physically looks like dog shit. Do not, I repeat, do not use performance. Do not use balance quality or ultra quality. You're going to come over here to the VRAM scale. You're going to come to this and you're going to put this at 75 like that. Or the lowest I would recommend you go is 65 like this. You can type it in yourself and press enter and put this like this. If you're running AMD FSR 1.0, right? This you're going to change to low now. Now your game will not look any worse than what it would do on normal. The game does not have that much visual difference between low and normal. 
Now for people out there that needs that extra FPS, go with low. Your game will still run perfectly fine and also look very, very good. Just make sure you have this at high. Please go ahead and have that at high and have this at normal when you are using AMD FSR 1.0. Now, a lot of people also use AMD FSR 2.1. Now, I highly recommend if you are using this option, please go to quality or ultra quality. Whatever you put on AMD FSR 1.0, you're going to put at 2.1 as well. So, this at quality or ultra quality, never balance, never performance, you are going to throw your monitor out your window of how bad the game looks. So, quality or ultra quality. Then this stays the same, 65, 75, the highest you can go here, if your machine can handle it, is 85. Go ahead and do that, and have this at low as well, and have this at high as well. Now, this one over here, Fidelity FX Cache, a lot of people use this, a fuck ton of people use this option. If you're using this option right now, you can put this to your own personal preference. It's a very good upscaling. It makes the game look really sharp, detailed, and you can see your enemies very, very clearly. And it also gives you very good FPS. This is your own personal preference on what you're going to do inside here. Okay, now it depends on the machine that you're currently running. So you're running a low end machine, I would recommend 65. If you're running a medium end machine, I would run 85 over here like that. To a high-end machine, I would run completely 90 to its fullest, like that, okay? Then, you can either leave this at low, or you can go to normal and make your game look really good while using Fidelity FX Cache. Yes, it's sharp, but then put this at normal and your game will look really, really good. All right, let's jump through to the rest of the settings. High, depth of field off, detail quality level, I have mine at normal. If you are struggling with FPS, low okay but if your machine can run it go with normal right now this very moment modern warfare 3 runs this perfectly fine at normal okay particle resolution i have mine at very low please leave it at very low do not change this bullet impacts leave it on this is the effects of the game you do not need to see it it's a multiplayer game you do not need to see the fucking effects you're not going to go like oh wow an explosion no for the love of fuck you're not going to do that turn it the fuck off it's an fps hogger turn it the fuck off shader quality low okay low right now cool on the montessor streaming skip this fucking option you do not need it turn it the fuck off if yours is on turn it off right now scroll down you're going to come to local texture streaming quality low okay shadow quality low you do not need to see the shadows in multiplayer you really do not need to screen space shadows low ambient occlusion off leave it the fuck off screen space reflections off static reflection quality low you're going to come over here tessellation off off leave it off this just is an fps hogger for the love of fuck leave this off you do not need this okay you do not need it terrain memory max doesn't matter what machine you are running volumetric quality low physics quality off you do not need to see the physics in this game turn it the fuck off it's multiplayer turn it off weather grid volumes off yours might default to something like ultra high normal okay turn it the fuck off you really do not need to see this water quality is something that i have mentioned multiple times in my videos that you do not need any of these fucking options on turn it the fuck off you do not need to see the water quality in this fucking game for multiplayer game you do not need to see the water quality if you are playing the campaign version i would tell you to put it on all you are playing multiplayer right now you want the best fps and you want the game to look really good as well now if you turn this off your water is not going to look any worse than what it's going to look when you put all on just turn it the fuck off okay turn it the fuck off once you're done with all of these settings and you have your settings that you have Go ahead and apply them. I can't apply this because I am not going to run Fidelity of its cache. I run this over here. I run that over there. That. I have this at normal high. And then I can apply these settings, right? This is what I'm currently running. Yours will be your own personal preference on what you run inside here, depending on the machine that you are running. Okay. Now, you're going to go to the view tab. And as you can see, this is my view tab over here. You can copy my settings as is if you want to do so. But 
view, I can't tell you what to do. I really can't tell you what to do inside here. It's your own personal preference. One thing I'm going to mention is this over here. Inverted flash. I highly recommend taking advantage of this because if you get flash banged at night, your entire screen goes white and I'm very sure that your entire room goes white as well. It's quite eye blinding. Now, if you turn this on, it will invert the flash from white to black. It's actually better. Take advantage of this by switching this on. Please go ahead and do so. Right, from here, we're going to go to the interface. We're going to come over here, come to color customization and come inside here. You're going to have this at custom, all right? You're going to have you at your own personal color, your team and your party, the exact same colors. Please go ahead and have this at the exact same colors. Make your enemies whatever color you want to. I have mine as magenta pink. You can choose whatever color you want to inside here. I have mine as magenta pink and nothing stands out better than magenta pink inside this game. I highly recommend that you go ahead and do this. Please go ahead and do this. Filter two on the color filter, both 100%, 100%, and you should be good to go. Now, this is the most important step that you're going to need to take is this right here for all of these settings to apply to your game is this right here. You're going to come to the display tab like this and you're going to click on restart shader preloading and you're going to click restart. Once you clicked on the restart button, I don't need to do this since I've already done it. Once you click on the restart button, you need to quit out of your game. It doesn't matter if you're running it through Steam or Battle.net. Relaunch the game. Once you relaunch the game, at the top left corner, it's going to say installing your shaders for you from 0 to 100%. Once that is done, please don't move your mouse, don't touch your keyboard while that shaders gets installed. It's just going to make you a cup of coffee or whatever the fuck. Just leave it till it runs to 100% and it finishes. Ladies and gentlemen, if this improved your FPS, made your game run better, make sure you smash the motherfucking like button. Leave a comment down below. I'll be making more videos as the game progress with updates and stuff like that. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if this actually worked you and it benefited you a lot, make sure to hit that super thanks. There's a thanks button down below in this video. Click on it and you can do a donation to my YouTube channel. Make sure to become a member of my YouTube channel as well. It means a lot to me. It always has, always will. You guys are fucking amazing. I hope this helped you. And as always, peace out.